Hello and welcome. Please read the problem, pause the video, and try it on your own. You can do this. Okay, let's read the problem together. It says, what number does the expression below equal? So we see this expression, and before I even think about the answer, I'm just going to notice a couple of things. I'm noticing that I'm multiplying. I'm noticing that each term has the same base. I notice that this base is 3, this base is 4, and this base is negative, and this base is invisible, so that's got to mean uh, it's an exponent, excuse me, this exponent is 1. Did I say bases? Let me say that again, sorry. So, so I'm going to just start here. Uh, before I even solve this thing, and just notice what's happening. I'm noticing that we've got an operation that's consistent throughout, right? We've got multiplication. I'm going to also notice that these bases are equivalent. And then I will look at the exponents, and what I notice is that we've got 3, this positive exponent. We've got 4, this positive exponent. And we've got this negative exponent of 1 over here. I see an invisible exponent over here. That's got to be an exponent of 1. That's the only exponent you don't need to write because it has no impact on the base. So thinking about that, I'm thinking, well, since we're multiplying all these numbers with the same base, we can just add the exponents. How sweet is that? right? So here, I'm going to look at the exponents. They are 3 and 4. Oops, I forgot the invisible one. I'll put it in this order. Since we're adding, we can also put them in any order. It won't matter. We get the same result. And if we add this, we get 7 plus 1 plus negative 1. 7 plus 1 is 8. Plus negative 1, that is 7 altogether. So here, the exponent should be 7 in our answer. The base should be 3, because we're just counting the number of 7s we have. And here, right, we get our answer, b, 3 to the 7th power. And if you're curious as to what's happening, remember why these laws work. I'll do a little bit, maybe I'll even write the whole thing out. It's just a lot to write, I guess. But we can handle that. Okay. So 3 to the 3rd is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 to the 1st. So just notice so far we've got 3 to the 3rd times 3 to the 1st. If we had just those two, that would be 3 to the 4th altogether. Because we're just grouping them all together. In other words, 3 to the 3rd. Right, these three exponents, three threes being multiplied, and three to the first, this one three over here. Right, if we multiply them together, we just have four threes. You can just add those threes together. Well, then what's happening? Well, then we have times another three to the fourth, times three, times three, times three, and times three. So we have three to the fourth. That's this grouping right here. Now we have another three to the fourth. Right. So the, the first one, 3 to the 4th, kind of sloppy, 3 to the 4th times another 3 to the 4th. Now we're at 3 to the 8th. Right? In other words, there are, this is getting sloppy and cluttered, sorry, but there are 8 3's all here. Now, what about 3 to the negative first? Well, that's 1 over 3. That's like dividing by a 3. So you can take this 1 third and kind of pair it up or multiply it to any of the 3's here, and they'll cancel out, which is why you take one of the, the 8 3's away, because this right? One-third is going to cancel one of them out. Or we can think of it as adding the exponents. 8 plus negative 1 is 7, and that also works. So if you were to figure all of this out, right, if you were to go right through the order operations, you would get 3 to the 8th, and then a third of that, which is the same as eliminating one of these 8 threes. One-third times any of those threes is just 1. All right, hope this helped.